Hello class! This lecture will cover the basics of the writing process. Writing is a process that goes through multiple steps before the final product, an essay, can be produced. These steps include planning, pre-writing, writing, and several rounds of revising, editing, and proofreading. Do not try to skip or eliminate steps, or your end product will suffer. Planning is the very first step to writing. Think about what do you want to write? Whom do you want to write it for? Why are you writing? What are you trying to accomplish through this piece? The first question is, what should I write about? What will be my subject? More than likely, for your college courses, you will be assigned a broad subject. Read the assignment prompt carefully and then read it again. Highlight the main requirements and understand what the assignment is asking you to do. Even if you are assigned a subject you are not interested in, you can make it interesting by using the broad subject and narrowing it down into something that interests you. For example, if you were given the broad subject to write about education, Think what interests you about education. Maybe you want to compare the education system of two nations, or you want to talk about the standardized tests used to assess students. Following the example here, you can break education down into college education and then you can further narrow it down to online colleges. While narrowing your topic is key to focused writing, it is important to be careful and not narrow down your topic to a point where you quickly reach the dead end and have nothing more to add. This is why it is important to understand what your assignment is asking for. If you are required to write a short evaluation paper, you will approach your topic differently versus if you were to write a 10-page research essay. Once you know what you want to write, consider whom are you writing for? Who is your audience? How much knowledge does your audience have about the issue? What information is necessary to add to the existing knowledge of your audience? Provide enough details because you do not want to leave a gap between the information you are trying to share and the information your audience previously had. However, nor do you want to bore you them with the information that is clearly known to the type of audience you are writing to. The approach you will take to the subject will depend entirely on whom you are writing for. One such example is, if you are writing a message to a close friend of yours, your writing style and tone will be entirely different from the message or letter you write to your boss or professor. This example on this slide shows how the amount of background and basic information you provide will also depend on your audience and their knowledge of the subject. Next you have to consider, why are you writing? What are you trying to accomplish from this task? What is your purpose? Are you trying to bring something to your audience attention? Are you just showing facts? You have to be clear about what your purpose is. And for college assignments, to understand the purpose of your writing, you will first have to understand your assignment and make sure you have not been assigned a specific purpose. Once you have a clear understanding of your subject, audience, and purpose, writing will become easier for you. And the information you provide in your work will have a better influence. When you get to the actual writing, pre-writing is the first and very important step. Yet, due to shortage of time, students generally tend to skip this step. Consider pre-writing as a map, a blueprint, to a bigger picture. You cannot construct a strong and well-planned structure without the blueprint. There are different types of writing techniques. It does not matter which technique you choose for your pre-write or if you use multiple of these techniques together. I personally am a pre-writing kind who includes asking questions and brainstorming into the pre-write. Clustering for me works better when I am trying to explain things to others. 
Once we have a pre-write, we move towards the formal draft. Whether you are the kind who has to have a thesis statement in front of you before you start developing a paper, or you are the kind that puts all the information together before a thesis can be formulated, you need a thesis statement for your paper. A thesis statement is a sentence that expresses the main ideas of your paper. It offers your readers a quick and easy to follow summary of what the paper will be about. A thesis statement is usually written in one sentence. It is a statement, not a question. It identifies the subject of your paper. It is written in the writer's own words, not stated as a quote or paraphrase from a source. Two main components of a thesis statement are the topic and the main point you want to make about that topic. When formulating a thesis statement, avoid making your statement too vague, too broad, or too narrow. Additional information about formulating a thesis statement will be discussed in a separate lecture dedicated just to thesis statements. All types of essays should have a thesis statement in the introductory paragraph and each body paragraph should have a topic sentence of its own. A topic sentence to a paragraph is the same as a thesis statement to an essay. It lets the readers know what the paragraph will be about. Topic sentences and supporting paragraphs of an essay should aid in bringing across the point made within the thesis statement. All types of essays have three common parts, an introduction, the body, and a conclusion. Introductions provide background and historic information behind the issue. It helps fill in the gaps and get the audience engaged. This is a good place to define any term that might need defining. It is my personal suggestion to not start your introduction with a question. Do not state the obvious. Provide information that would help better understand your topic. Generally speaking, an introductory paragraph includes a thesis statement, which is usually the last sentence of the paragraph. However, remember, thesis statement is a part of the introductory paragraph. It does not qualify as an introduction in itself. Your introductory paragraph should be of a reasonable length. Do not make it too short or too long. The body of an essay consists of paragraphs that support the main claim. There are two types of sources you can use as evidence, primary sources and secondary sources. Primary sources are sources written by writers that experienced the event or imagined a scenario firsthand. Primary research involves the collection of data that does not already exist. Diaries, speeches, letters, interviews, and autobiographies are some examples of primary sources. Secondary sources, on the other hand, interpret and analyze primary sources. These sources are one or more steps removed from the event. Secondary sources may have pictures, quotes, or graphics of primary sources in them. Examples include textbooks, magazines, art magazine articles, commentaries, and encyclopedias. Once you have supported your body paragraphs with reliable evidence, it is time to conclude your work. Write your conclusion with the same energy you wrote the introduction with. Remind the readers of your main point. Make observations and suggestions. If you want to restate your thesis in the concluding paragraph, do so by reformulating the original. Do not copy the thesis statement from the introductory paragraph. Just like the introductory paragraph, your concluding paragraph should be of a reasonable length. Do not make it too short or too long. Organization is key to successful writing. Even if you have the most unique ideas, but you do not organize those ideas properly, your paper will lose its strength. All your thoughts and ideas should be well organized and your writing should flow smoothly. You can use any of the three techniques to organize your paper, chronological order, space order, or emphatic order. What matters is that you stick with a chosen order throughout. 
Get into the habit of writing multiple drafts. If possible, put gap between drafts. This means leave your work alone for some time and come back to it with a fresh mind to make changes, changes and improvements. Read and reread the assignment instructions before you construct each draft. Make sure your work meets requirements. Revise your work. When revising, do not look for spelling or grammatical errors. Instead, look at the whole assignment and see if it flows well and makes sense as a whole. Check if your paper is unified, well supported and organized. Eliminate wordiness. Provide only the information that actually aids in supporting your main idea. As the final step, edit your paper. Look for any grammatical, punctuation, or structural errors. Always proofread your paper before submitting it for grading. Write your paper in third-person speech. Eliminate the use of first and second-person pronouns like I, me, my, you, yours, ours, etc. 